Right then, guys. I'm going to teach you how to breed Doobia roaches. Get started. Look, look, check it out. Check it out. Northern Exotics. Go check them out. They're all over eBay, all over Facebook. It's me. <laughs> Shameless plug. So let's get into the video. So to start off breeding your own Doobia roaches, you don't need a lot of stuff. You don't need a lot of stuff at all. The main container you need is a big tub. It doesn't have to be too deep simply because they don't climb. Doobie roaches do not climb, no matter what you hear online, no matter what you hear everywhere. I've been doing it for a few years now and um, I've got no tape or anything like that, but this is how I breed them. You need your tub first. The next thing you're gonna need is some of these little egg crate things. Now, top tip, if you go to your local cafe, they're gonna have an abundance of these and they tend to give them away totally free as well. Either that or you can buy them online, they're dead expensive online, or you can save these little things out of your live food tubs chuck them straight in and that'll do your job just perfect. Now these are for hiding places. They like to hide in here. Now if you stack them vertically as well, you've got a bit of heat on the bottom. I'll go through that in a minute. You've got a bit of heat and if it's too hot down here, they'll scurry up to the top and they'll get to the right temperature. They're cold blooded, so they're just like your normal reptiles and they can thermicate themselves. Thermicate? Thermicate? You know what I mean. But anyway, they love all the little dark little nooks and crannies and. That's where they do most of their bee breeding. They'll only breed if they feel safe to breed. If it's safe for their babies, then it's great. So they love all these little nooks and crannies. They love, if you stack them together like that, either like that or like that, whatever, then they love to scurry all underneath it all and everything. Now if you do hear some rustling around, it's him. Hugo the boss. You can see the Doobia roaches, he loves Doobias. So we'll chuck some in there in a bit. You're breeding these for live food, so let's get on with it. So this is my setup anyway. We're inside a 36 litre rub, a really useful box, amazing little piece of kit. And check it out. We have got loads of babies. So this system's obviously working, so you can take that for granted. There's loads in here, absolutely loads. This is it, it's simply as easy as setting it up like this. You get your egg crates, no matter what they are, and you stack them vertically, you can stack them horizontally, you can do whatever you want, just that is it. That is how you set it up, dead easy. I've not got much air holes in this because the rub lid hasn't got a tight seal around the top, so that, that's where they get their air ventilation from. That is basically their setup complete. What you need next is the food. I use dog food, bog standard dog food. For the water sauce, I'll chuck in some oranges, some apples. Every now and then I'll go a bit organic with them, chuck in some lettuce leaves and just some moist containing salad sort of stuff. If your doobia roaches are eating extremely healthy, that means when you feed them to Hugo, your boss monitor, or your bearded dragon or your leopard geckos, they're going to be healthy as well. That's the whole point of breeding your own live food. Let's get on with the setup. Here's a load of the doobias. We've got tiny little babies. We've got adults. I'm going to teach you how to sex them right now. Dead easy to sex them. You can see in some scenarios, just like that one there, that there with the long wings, wings spanning the entire length of his body, that there is a male. And that one just there running around, that is a female. You can tell the difference quite simply. Let's go to another female because that one's run off and hid because she's camera shy. You can see all these little babies. There's another female just there. And there's a male. There's the two you can compare. Long body wings. The wings that span the entire length of the body on the left, that is the male just there. And that one there is the female, because they've only got tiny little stumps for wings. Now these don't fly, even though they've got wings, they're pretty useless, they do not fly. But that is how you sex your doobia roaches. Now you can totally separate these if you want to, separate the babies from the adults. I never have them. I've just left it as is. As you can tell, we've got roaches from all sizes in here. Got the adults there, you can see a teenager underneath him, a couple of babies, look at all them. The babies, we call them nymphs, um, because that's what people call them, and if you don't call it them, you'll look kind of silly. Now, you can see the really lightly coloured ones. They are dubia roaches, fresh out of moult. Just like a tarantula, their exoskeleton hasn't hardened yet. So as it does harden, they'll go dead dark, like that one just there. Compare that to the teenage one next to it. I'm going to call it a teenage one. It's not a teenager, but mid sort of age doobia roach anyway. 
these are an extremely healthy food source for your animals look at them now i've got dubia roaches in here of all different sizes so if i wanted to feed my leopard geckos i'll use the babies or the slightly older ones if i wanted to feed the bosque monitor i'll feed some of the adults now what i'll do when i'm feeding adults i'll do it very wisely shall we say um i only really feed these occasionally i let them breed up they're a bit of a f bit of fun for me and my lad but you can see the two males there they're supposed to be one male to every five females so if i find i've got a few more males in there they will fight if there's too many males but if there's too many males i'll only feed off the males because i want more babies so i've got to keep the females females just like in our society are more important now people say you've got to get a dark tub because they do prefer the dark and that is correct they do prefer dark i find it dark as and when i do that so between those two there if i just put one over the top of the other one nice and easy just like that the gap in between the two that's nice and dark in there when they're like that so that's the reason not really a reason but i had this spare tub lying around i didn't want to buy a new one so i'm using this tub and i'm making it dark in between the alleyways there and that's how well it's worked for me now most people don't like these in their own home so i've got to reassure you all they can't climb so if you're really scared of them escaping just get a bigger tub a taller tub and only stick it around the bottom and that way they will not climb if they do have so happen to climb they'll only climb about that much and then they'll fall back in again because they are quite stupid like me but one of the things i really like about having these in my house is this listen to this noise i think it kind of sounds like the rain and the next bonus of these they don't really smell i clean mine out once a month the dew are clean but they don't smell they don't smell at all so um, keep them clean once a month and you'll be perfectly fine with that as well it's free live food there's no smell no chance of escapees extremely healthy what more could you want in a free live food and i just simply grab this and pour it into one corner or just grab a handful of it lovely little dog biscuits lovely little dog biscuits Now for heat wise, I have just got a strip of heat cable. I have it underneath the majority of all my inverts at one side of it, so they've got a heat gradient between one to two. And I've just ran the heat cable there and back under one side of the enclosure. As I say, if it gets a bit warm, they'll just start at the bottom. If it's a bit too warm, they'll crawl up the top and they'll regulate their own body temperature that way. So shall we feed some to the boss monitor? We've got a calcium tub to dust them with. Take the lid off. Uh. Hey calcium, nothing special. Let's find a dubia for them. Um, again, I only go for males. As you can tell, that is a long winged body male. He goes in the tub. Best invention ever. Big, massive, long pair of tweezers. There's another male. He can go in there. And let's put the lid on them. Flip this over and try and find another male. Dead simple, there's a few. And I think I'll have you mate. Again, a long winged body, which means it's a male. He goes in there. Actually, Hugo's gonna get a treat. He's gonna have another male today as well. But oh, that is it. I've got four males in there. Scatter some. So you all know Hugo anyway. If you don't know Hugo, there he is. He's our Savannah monitor, our Bosque monitor. Go and check out our reptile room tour video. I'll stick a link in the card above. Just click on that, it'll take you through it and you can see him a bit better. But let's get on to feeding him. Want another one, Hugo? This one, Hugo, we're going to go far, okay? That's one, mate.
that's why you should have big enclosures for your animals. So guys, that's basically all you really need to know about breeding your own dubia roaches. Some people make it dead complicated, I don't. That is how I do it, dead simple, just leave it in the corner, give them food, give them an orange every now and then for a bit of moisture. And from me and Hugo, we shall see you all next time.